the past, I've experienced unexplainable supernatural events. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I've questioned if what I believe is true. That's the nature of knowledge. What, what is all about? That's the nature of knowledge. <laughs> Look at that, a middle ground. <laughs> Look at that. I even question, like, being an ex-Christian sometimes. I call myself a hopeful agnostic. I, I dig sure it. I hope something's out there because that's really depressing if there's not. But if there isn't, that's cool too. I just, <laughs> yeah, like, obviously we all became ex-Christians because we started questioning what we believe. And I think that's really important to, like, solidify your faith as well, like, on your side too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for saying that because that is true. Like, that is something, me questioning is something that has solidified my faith a lot more, finding information about like the evidence of Christ, the evidence of God. Cause I feel like honestly, you'd be lying to yourself if you didn't say it, that it took faith to believe in anything. It takes faith to believe in the big bang. It takes faith to believe that there's this void out here there. Why would you and say that? Because you don't know. Were you there the, when the, the big bang happened? We don't need to be there. We have likelihood. Were you there? We, we don't need to be there. We can measure that light from the from the. Then why does science keep the... changing? It changes like every year. Actually, because we discovered we were wrong. The, because of the same way Newtonian physics changed a lot of proof into here. Einstein, the same way things evolved. Knowledge keeps on growing. The 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 hubris of Christianity to say we have. That ain't what she asked. She didn't ask why does science keep growing. She asked, why does it keep changing? If, if, if this is what it is, it should not change. Have everything figured out and everything is true. Science has humbleness to say, we know only this and we keep on researching mm -hmm. to, to grow our knowledge. Science doesn't claim to know everything. That. Your belief system does to claim to know everything and doesn't move off of that point. Science keeps updating, <laughs> making itself That's more and more accurate. That's why we have to stop, y'all. We, we don't know the, everything. That's the beauty of life. That's Sorry, the beauty of we living don't know is everything. to keep learning. And I think that's crazy. So it's so to, keep it, to keep saying that every time something changes that we thought to be true, this is awesome. We well, were wrong. Well, well, we, we thought that we didn't need to wash our hands before surgery. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm the, glad that the, we discovered uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden, we, dis we discovered the microbes and how that. But that's not the science changing. The science was you should have been washing your hands back when you weren't. That that didn't change the science. That affected you know the health of of, of the body, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, then stop back. saying you know. Then just be like, we, we think never this. said we, we knew. That. We said that we were humble in science to know that we know what we know. And we're constantly the, trying said, no. to grow that knowledge. We don't have the hubris yeah. to say we know everything. I think yeah. it's so important to be like, know what we know what we I know. can't prove that God exists, but I also can't prove that he doesn't exist. Yeah. I love that you said that, and I appreciate yeah. that. Like, I and I hope the, you all say that too, like 100%. that you can't 100% prove God. Right? I agree. Yeah, that's what faith is. Speaking about belief. Um, I've spoken to a lot of ex-Christians because uh, six years ago I started a ministry called Uber Evangelism. <laughs> Trained about a dozen, Uber? People, yeah, a dozen people to go across the country to drive for Uber and also talk about Jesus. Oh my God, so I've spoken to a lot friend. of people. Is that how Gideon got saved? <laughs> yeah, the Uber how... drivers talk to you about it? I'm the Uber driver who talks about Jesus. Do you think that's yeah, harassment? Oh no. Aside from going over that, um, so I've spoken to a lot of people from different perspectives, different religions, and it really enhanced my faith in Christ. But also, I've also spoken to a lot of ex-Christians, and you could tell me if I'm wrong, but although the stats say it's because uh, they disagree with some of the church's political stand, negative experience, but from my conversations with them, it appeared that most of them became ex-Christians because they just don't believe in Jesus. Is that right? I, for me, I'm an extremely reluctant ex-Christian, right? Why? Like, I would like to be a Christian, but I, it, it, things don't seem true. Yeah. Like, what it do you just mean doesn't... By not believing in Jesus, like that believe. he's the son of God. Of course, everybody knows he, he's existed. That's, I mean, that's, uh, that's I under mean, debate. Yeah. Right, but, but that, he he's the, that he's the son of God. It's no, not that he existed. Oh, okay. Right. But yeah, like, to believe that he is the son of God, died for people's yeah. sins, 
I like his messaging. I like the things right. that he's saying. A lot of people do. Right. I, I right. think a lot of people really like but those yeah, and like to right. live by Yeah, you're right. Thank them. you for clarifying. I'm talking about believing in Jesus as Lord and Savior is what I'm talking about. Well, yeah, or, well, maybe not just in the way that you say, right? right, right like, right. like I could believe in Jesus, but not definitely not that thing. So that's why Christianity doesn't work for me anymore, right? Yeah. For me, in my case, it's just that through study uh, and a, a truly unbiased research and honest searching, I arrived at the conclusion that Christianity, as it is presented to us so far throughout the ages, I believe it deeply immoral and the image of God, it's deeply immoral. And, that, and some of the teachings that are there are incredibly immoral. So I, I don't subscribe to that because I do believe that I do have a better moral compass. I find it hard to believe that you came to that conclusion based on objective research. Yeah, well, well I mean, colonialism, the Bible, the right? Yeah. Colonialism, manifest slavery. destiny, slavery, what is not denied or, or rejected in the Bible. So there are a whole bunch of immoral things that happen in the Bible that some apologists will say, well, no, 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 no. That was a historical thing that everyone did, so it has to be documented as the thing that happened historically. So is it human or is it divine? So, you know, I just, I just, it, it, for me, it's just immoral. Going back to the original prompt, I think um, for me, it doesn't matter how much I tell my testimony. I always question whether or not people are going to accept God through it. If you guys don't accept it, that's okay. You know, it's it, for me, it's kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet. You know, it's like you could pick and choose. You want the chow mein or the sushi? You know what I'm saying? Like, There's still only one Asian. right answer, right? I mean, <laughs> technically. It's yeah, fine that you believe that choose. there is one right, right answer. <laughs> if it's for you and your truth, that's fine. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's yeah, a very that's postmodernism true. approach. You know, I think from my perspective that that's right. As long as you don't intervene with my perspective, we're, we're cool. For sure. Well, I get what you're saying because uh, there's a lot of crap in institutional religion, including Christianity, judging, hypocrisy, uh, abuse. So I get it when people religion. walk away from the church, uh, no. but no. don't walk away from Jesus. No, 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 no. no. We gotta, I think we got to start saying that differently. There's not a lot of crap in institutional religion. There's a lot of crap in people. The, inst the institution of Christianity is biblical. It's scriptural. There is no crap in it. The crap is in people. <laughs> the crap is in people. And so, yes, the people are Christians, but, the, but Christians don't make Christianity. So we got to stop. We got to stop saying that. We got to start focusing on when you see the crap, you see a Christian at a certain stage in their walk. That has nothing to do with the institution, the foundations, the cornerstones of Christianity. It has everything to do with where that person is in their walk. 100%. I'll tell you, uh, like a thing I just can't grasp is like, okay, we're born. We didn't ask to be here. Mm -hmm. We are flawed from the beginning. Life from a biblical Jesus standpoint seems like it's one big test that we have to pass. And if we don't, I'm a good person. Yeah. I think I would go to heaven, but I won't because I can't force myself to believe in Jesus and God. That's what that I don't sucks. believe. And I know that you do believe. I don't. How do you believe it? How do you believe in heaven without believing in Jesus and God? I think that Jesus Christ, the embodiment of love, is saying, Going to hell because you were kind majority, to me. That's what the Bible says. Right. And and that, you're not going to hell for being it, kind. You're going into hell for not surrendering to Jesus but Christ. But that's not okay, her fault. It's, it's a narrow road. Logically, that's not her fault. The game, the game, the game, the game is that so we're throwing you here question. and you decide. Yeah. So Hitler's on his deathbed and he says, God, I believe in you. Hitler's going to heaven and I'm not. What the fuck is that about? On his deathbed, yes, he would go to heaven. Yeah. I do believe we have free will, and when we come to these things like, oh, this was wrong, and we learn from him, I think that is what his version of believing in me is. She believed in love and kindness, which is Jesus Christ. So that's what I believe would send her and everyone else to heaven. So the, I want to challenge that. Then yeah. why don't cut the middleman and just believe in kindness? I wish so I could it's say. It's not about that. The Bible's purpose, that God's purpose wasn't about trying to make people good or to improve people, or to fill people with love. The purpose 
was to save people. Save us from what? He got in the fall. Everybody he needs the fall. Jesus. Well, let me I say something that you might not like. I think all four of you know that God really exists. <laughs> Deep down, <laughs> I think you do know. <laughs> Many versions However, of God. you don't want it to be true. And so, so whatever the right? no, no, no. I said you no. might not like it, right? No, no, no. you might not like it and categorically accepting but it. But let me finish my thought, though. No, that just a Because thought. you don't want it to be true. Okay, maybe not specific no. to you, but for the people in the scientific community or historical community, they don't want the God to be true. That's telling them what's right and wrong, that what they're doing is that's wrong. That's a generalization. Right. That's this a is thought. a generalization. Yeah. So I'm saying probably, most likely, the scientific community and others who are skeptical because they don't want it to be true. You're presenting margin of error. Probably, maybe, this thing, that other thing. That's well, a margin not, of it's error. It's not a brain thing, it's a heart condition. That's not science. Even worse. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I fear death. Yeah, I'd be glad. Yay. I wish I didn't fear death. But I do. Yeah. Like, and I used to be, since I grew up in, like, a private school my whole life, mm -hmm. fire and brimstone, baby. Yeah, like, yeah, you are right. going to burn, burn, burn. Yeah. And I've done my research, and I don't think that hell is a literal place. But sometimes I'm like, hmm. But yeah, what if, like, the pastors in the back of my mind that I've gone through in youth group, I'm like, but what if it is? But I refuse to live, like, fear-based yeah. and just believe in God because I'm scared. Like, that's not living to me, and I yeah. can't, like, force myself to believe in it. I know my opinion doesn't matter, but I, I'm i sorry, I just don't believe that you're going to hell. I you, love that. There's, you just, a, that there's just an aura about people that are just bad and evil and want, they're, they're going. You know what I mean? There's no there's no way in hell yeah. that you're going there. So, But I, I feel, uh, I fear what death will feel like. I'm like, man, I, I feel like it's going to hurt. And I'm, I hate saying that because I'm such a pansy, but I am terrified of pain and, and stuff, unless it's the good kind, you know, and warranted, yeah, you know, a little, 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 little so, so. So. <laughs> But it, it, uh, that terrified me also because I'm afraid of what's going to happen to the people that actually care about me, just knowing that they're going through something and I can't be there to comfort them Well, anymore. apparently you're not even going to know what's happening down there. That's what Christians have told me, like, I won't even think about them. You won't even know them when they come up to heaven. I don't believe that. Like, uh, they say that you won't recognize your, like, partner. Wow. I don't believe that either. Oh, when your partner. Heaven. Yeah. Um, I thought heaven was supposed to be heaven, and uh, my heaven includes them, you know? I always just thought, like, do I want to live forever? It sounds so exhausting. <laughs> so I hope when I die, it's just, like, in the ground yeah. and just, like, resting. I hope not. I want us to hang out up there. I want us to go to a club up yeah, there. Yeah, we'll kiki up there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I used to be super afraid of dying. Um, and then, you know, had two partners in a row die. And uh, when people talk about an afterlife, I'm like, really? Another life after this one? That sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah, can it, only if I can only watch, like, HBO documentaries or something, you know. Um, Are you okay? You okay? You all right? <laughs> okay. Can I give you a hug? I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I hate the topic of death because you always remember the people that you care about that are gone. So again, it really hurts. I'm so sorry. sorry. No, <laughs> Don't apologize. You're human. You guys can go while I get my voice back together. You need anything from us? No, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Are you finished, Stacey? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, I lost two partners, and that kind of, I feel like watching, being with them as they died really made me not, first of all, A, <laughs> there's things that are worse than death. Uh, B, I don't have a fear of going to hell anymore. Um, I feel like I've already been through hell. I just feel like, oh, if 
all there is is blackness after this, just darkness. Like, yeah, let's go, let's go. It's like the, the big nap, please. Yeah, bring on the big nap. Yeah. Relax. I just want to rest. Yes. Uh, for me, I guess it's very similar. Why should I fear something that, in its simplest explanation, it may just be nothing. It may just be no experience, no pain, no suffering, and I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. I would say I, I don't personally fear, fear death because I believe I know where I'm going, but I'd be lying if I didn't say it wasn't something that ate me up inside to think of people that I know and if they don't know Jesus. And I even pray, like, maybe on their deathbed, you know, because I, I mean, we have family. Not everybody's Christian in my family. Um, not everybody's living what I believe to be a Christian life. Um, so I, I think about that, and that is that is hard, and I know there's a lot of people's perceptions of Christians is that we want to send you to hell so bad. And that's not it, so. Of course not. That's all. You're all right. If you keep talking, I'll probably get over <laughs> it, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually agree with that as well. You know, I used to fear death a lot, being in that type of lifestyle. Um, you know, I would carry a gun because I was afraid of dying, actually. Mm. You know, people think that, oh, we want to hurt people. No, actually, it was a defensive mechanism for me. But now that, similar to the sister here, like, by faith, I feel like I know where I'm going. And likewise, I feel bad about my friends. So that's why, um, you know, some of the people in my gang are, are actually my family members, my brother, my uncles. But for me, luckily, I kind of keep my faith in God and allow God to save a person because, like, we're all here, right? I can't change how you think. I can't change how you I can only, you know, uh, speak and then from my experience. And if you guys accept it, you accept it, you know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Well, even if you don't want it, I'm going to be praying for y'all. <laughs> so, you know, I'm definitely going to be praying for you. Not just, like, just, just praying for you, uh, for your well-being, for, for everything, so... I think everyone here is fantastic and stuff. Like, I genuinely, by the way, would love to talk to you about, like, I want to hear, like, some of your thoughts and stuff like okay. that and stuff, but I would genuinely want to be friends with everyone here. Like, I feel like I can hang out. And so I know that me and her are going to be super tight. So I think that you need to do stand-up. I, I do stand-up. <laughs> you do? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I told you. Didn't I, I, I say? Didn't I say? Yeah. She might actually do it. I called it. I want to say, as I as I Christian, I want to say, Pastor, um, you know, I want to apologize for uh, some of the things that you've experienced in the church. And um, no excuses. I'm not going to say oh, nobody's perfect, but um, that shouldn't have happened. There was abuse and judgment, and uh, that's not what Jesus stands for. And uh, I do disagree that I, I, I believe that you know that God is real. I'm going to go back to that, but let me just say, you know what? I'm not convinced, bro. <laughs> I do wish the best for you. And you as well. Yes. Same. Oh, you're going to get me again, don't you? I got a little teary eyed because, like, I didn't have, like, good father figures, so that was really nice. Oh. Uh, you're wonderful. Uh, you know. No, I, I really appreciate that you all came, you know, with your belief, but not proselytizing or forcing as other uh, people do. I like and would love that this that can spread out in a way that everyone can let everyone mm -hmm. practice their way of being a good human being and the things that are private to be kept private <laughs> thank you for being open thank you all of you guys yeah. thank you very we're much we're all looking for something to fill that void inside of us right some of us it's jesus some of us it's you know really wild sex um, <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oops, oops, oops. <laughs> I do love how in the end everybody kind of thanked everybody and um, everybody seemed to be okay with how the conversation went. That's how conversations should go. Okay? And Maybe that conversation went that way because it was structured, because people knew they were being filmed and that they would be broadcast all over the world. I don't know. But that's how conversations should go. Like everybody should have an opportunity to um, voice their opinions or how they feel and have people respond. And it's not about changing minds. 
It's about um, this is what I think, this is what you think, okay. And if some minds are changed, then cool. If not, you know, that's cool too. So I, I enjoyed that. I guess some of my key takeaways are, um, I do believe that, I mean, and this is just the truth. Christians are at different places in their walk. And so one of the things we have to stop doing is we have to stop teaching or preaching that Christians are perfect. Like we're just, we're so not, okay? We have to teach the truth about Christianity, about the fact that it is a walk, about the fact that when you're saved, you don't just automatically change. There is a process of changing you from glory to glory. It is a process. And so um, when you see a Christian act up, it's probably a point along in their journey where they act up, you know. Um, at the same time, we do have a responsibility to non-Christians to portray a people who are sincere. And what I mean by that is when you do stumble in your walk, you have to be sincerely apologetic for that stumble. You have to, what am I trying to say? Um, I'm not suggesting that Christians are going to go out there, get saved, but get perfect. But you do have to take responsibility. You do have to be accountable for every, every step in your walk. Um... I think that was a good, good social experiment. I think that more conversations should be held in that manner. I loved how they took turns. I loved how even when it got a little bit, um, you know, there were some points where people would talk over each other or wouldn't let each other speak, but they got that together really, really quick. So I appreciate that because that happens. So I appreciate that aspect of it. I appreciate how in the end, I appreciate how when, um, when she got up to go, when she got up and went to cry, that the people were concerned about her. Um, I appreciate that at the end, everybody got up and hugged each other. Like, it's just a conversation, okay? Conversations don't have to be uh, friend relationship altering. Like, they just don't, they just don't. Let's just talk, okay? Thank you guys for watching this review. If there are any other videos that you think we should do a review on, please send them to me in the comments or send them to my email. What are your thoughts? Tell me what you think about this particular video. Leave that in the comments and get ready for the next Wednesday night Bible class. We will see you there.